All right, welcome to this episode of How I Made. We're going to be making a silver browser. This is part one of a two-part series. So, the first thing, or probably the most important part of this, is the UI, since you could have all the code, you could have all the logic there, but if you don't have the UI, then it's essentially useless. Probably also the easiest thing to do. So, I already have the canvas layer set up, and I already have this entire project, so I'm kind of just giving a rundown on how I made it. And I have this multiplayer tab container, let me turn off settings there. We have our server browser margin here, and it has a vertical box container in it, and that VBox container has as a hbox container which just has a label that says server browser in it and a refresh button and then there's a scroll container with a vbox in it uh, this is where we are going to put the cards to join each server and then we have two http requests called get server list and send server data so i have a node pretty much attached to the root of the scene called server browser manager and it has a script attached to it this script takes care of all the logic for displaying the servers and server list getting the servers in the first place and then refreshing them and then handling connecting to them so we have we have some uh, export variables here. We have server list request, server data post, server list, host server button, join server button, refresh button. And then we also have a constant here. This is the IP address that you want your server browser server to be hosted on. So that is going to be the server that stores and can transmit information related to your servers. Now, this is going to be blacked out for you guys, uh, since this is my public IP address, but I do have it assigned to port 8066. And then we also have a signal here, ready to join server IP. Uh, then we also have a username string, an IP address string, and then we also have some miscellaneous constants here. So in the ready function, there are some things we need to connect. We need to connect the server list request. We need to call it to actually request something and then we need to tell it to connect to this request completed and the function is called dot server list so this will be called whenever the http request receives a response or does not receive a response so uh there's some things we're doing in this http request we're getting if we're not currently in a game if we are in a game then we don't want to do anything because players in game they can't interact with this if they are in game we want to get the response of the http request and if it is not successful then we show a pop-up now this is a custom pop-up system we show a pop-up that pretty much just says error fetching a server list and then we also want to disable some of our buttons correction we want to enable some of our buttons that's what disabled equals false does and then we just want to refresh button.txt is equal to refresh text which uh, up here is a refresh and then we return to prevent anything else in this function being called so after uh it receives a successful response and if we're not in game then it can loop over all the children and server list which is this vbox container here uh, that contains all the server cards it can loop over all those children and then we just delete them so this way you're not constantly stacking new server cards every time you refresh and then since our server browser server will return a json string we just want to instance a new json class so we just do that by saying var json is equal to json.new and then we want to parse that json so i just do body.get string from utf8 this body here is a pack divide array this is part of the signal of the http request and then i create a new variable of our server data is equal to json.getData so essentially what that's doing is taking the json text the string and converting it into a usable dictionary that connect that we can use to display the servers i have a packed scene here server card prefab and it's set to load this scene here i'm going to click on that just so we can see what this one's about right now it only has a label to show the host of the server and a button to connect to the server it does have a script on it uh this is primarily just for initialization but it does have a signal on it called join server and it takes in an ip address however when we initialize it we set the host so this one up here to the set host which is a parameter in this function and then we also set a hash we'll get into that in later episodes to this set hash and then we just want to update the text and then when we press this connect button here which is connected directly to that script we just want to say join server dot emit and then we emit this hash so we can connect to that in um the server browser manager whenever we 
initialize these cards. So what we're doing is we're looping over every server in the server data. So we could have three servers here. It would loop over server data three times and then run all this code in here three times. So what we're doing is we're making a new server card and we're instantiating that server card. We're adding it as a child to this server list VBox container. We're initializing it with the server.host and server.hash, and then we're connecting it to join server signal. Remember, that's this custom signal here that takes in an IP address, except here it actually takes in a hash. This is for security reasons. And, uh, where'd it go? And then we can uh, enable our buttons again and then set our refresh button.txt is equal to refresh text. So let's go to this join server pressed button. This takes in a hash similar to what the signal outputs. So it inputs what the signal outputs. And we just instance a new HTTP request. We add that HTTP request as a child. We request that server browser IP. Uh, so it's this IP up here that's blacked out. And we route it, where did it go? Uh, IP from hash. So what this is doing, is it's calling a specific API endpoint on the server browser server. And we don't really need to pass anything else in here other than the hash uh, of the server. And then whenever the request finishes, we call the function IP from hash, which looks similar to this signal up here, except it does some things slightly differently. All right, so I have it set up to print the body of the response, and then we emit a signal called ready to join server dot emit body dot get string from utf8 now this ready to join server that seems to be a signal and uh it's most likely connected to the game manager up here so i'm just to search for on server browser manager ready to join server ip is just a variant and then we just call the join server and then we pass in that ip uh this really isn't that important essentially what we're doing is we're just hiding the UI and then sending our multiplayer ENIP here to that and then we're saying in game is true. And whenever we, if we are the host, then we want it to remove our server from the server list if we close down that server. So in the game manager, uh, I have a function called, uh, what's it called? Disconnect self a server. And whenever we call that we should be saying closed server dot emit and then server browser manager can connect to that and it's, it's called on game closed server and what we're doing is we're making a new http request we're adding that http request as a child and then we're requesting an api endpoint on our server browser ip uh and this and the api endpoint is closed server and then we're passing in the ip address of the server to the server browser and we get this ip address from where do we actually get this from whenever a player hosts a server we just say hosted server dot emit and then we admit the player's username the the username is not really relevant it's really only there so you can see who the host is and this hosted server if i take a guess most likely connected to the server browser manager uh, on game hosted server we get the username uh, yeah, the script is storing a username and we just set it to the player name and then we make a new HTTP request We add the HTTP request as a child and then instead of requesting the server browser Instead of what we do is we get an API that can return our IP address and then we connect its request completed signal to IP got That's what this function down here is uh, It's set up to all these other signals and then we get its content uh, so this is a dictionary here, so IP is equal to body.getString from UTF-8, and then the host is the username. We IP address is equal to body.getString from UTF-8, and then we make a new message, and then we just say json.stringify contents. So this is what this is up here. Our contents is equal to that dictionary, and then we call server data post dot request, and we get the server browser IP, and then we just send that message to that server that's what the server data post is is it's there to tell us when we host a server and when we close down the server so the server browser knows when to update the server list and that should be it if i haven't covered join server press but it appears we already have so if you like this video be sure to leave a like and subscribe it helps our channel helps get content like this recommend others that's all from me for now funuber out